HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Fletcher Tilton, Attorneys at Law, serving Central Massachusetts and beyond with responsive solutions. Integrity, leadership, and excellence, Fletcher Tilton. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll show you the many activities that occurred around Hopkinton in honor of Martin Luther King Day, including interviews with some of the participants who used their day off to help many great causes. We will give you a glimpse at some terrific music played at the library and also get you updated with Hiller's Sports as we are at mid-season for winter athletics. But first, the Elementary School Building Committee gave an update about their progress with designing the new school at the Hopkinton Library. At a public session in the Hopkinton Library, the Elementary School Building Committee made it clear that now is the time to give your input on what you think about the project locations and designs and what your preference would be. People, if people want to weigh in on which location is best, now is the only time to do that. Uh, by the end of February, early March, the latest, we will have concluded our evaluation with community input and uh, expertise from the, the team and made a decision on the site. Right now, we're looking at four locations, 11 different options at those four locations, but by another six to eight weeks from now, we'll have one choice, and that's what's going to be going to town meeting. So we need people to get involved and to buy in and help us uh, make the choice that we think is going to work and uh, be well received uh, when it comes to that vote in town meeting. Chair Joe Markey explained the ways you can reach the ESBC. Uh, we have a website, HopkintonSchoolProject.com, where you can find more information. As there's a whole bunch of stuff being created on a daily basis now, and those key documents are added here as they come available. Uh, this is where you can find more information. Is there a place to Click to provide email feedback as well on the site. I believe there is. Yeah, down on the bottom box right there. And we're on social media. I realize not everyone in Hopkins is on social media, but for those that are, uh, we've been using Facebook. You can find us at Hopkins School Project on Facebook and uh, interact there to ensure you get future updates or check there on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, we have Hopkins ESPC on Twitter. Uh, HCAM has been doing a monthly uh, update series in addition to covering each of our meetings where they ask us each month at kind of a different topic and we, we cover that in depth on this uh, HCAM uh, show. The timeline was explained for building the new school. But the timeline really was <laughs> starting a couple of years ago uh, uh, when the district submitted application to the state then formed the committee. Over the past year, we've been forming the project team. Uh, right now, we're, we're, we're now concluded the phase that um, the MSBA calls forming the project team. I think we're in module three module of their program. And the, the key element there is the actual execution of the feasibility study. So in town meeting, May 2013, Hopkinton uh, funded $600,000. Now that we're at the point of doing engineering evaluation of sites and working with architects and project managers, we're now starting to use that money to execute the feasibility study. And a portion of that will be reserved for the detailed um, schematic design on our one chosen site. So as far as timeline from here out, uh, again, we expect to have a site decision on which location by February, March, and then uh, we would proceed into schematic design on that one site and have a special town meeting in the fall of 2015 to come to town meeting with a funding proposal for constructing the new school, at which point we would know the MSBA reimbursement and other things like that as well. 
One of the questions asked was about if there was budget variation among the possible sites of the new school. The Irvine site is a big property um, and is there an overall budget for this whole project and so the acquiring a site is going to eat out of the budget for the whole project or is there some flexibility with budget from site so to site? The, 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 at this juncture we're still at the very beginning of this journey yeah. so the, the budget has not been established uh, you know part of our job is to kind of collect all that information and, and you know evaluate it for the town with the with the building committee itself so at this point there's no set hard stop on the budget you know it, you know it may be worthwhile for the town to purchase the land at Irvine for example because you're gaining more than just a school you have future capacity to build other playing fields or things at that particular school where you don't have that kind of benefit at say the center school and that may be worth a slight, slight premium over the cost of just building a straight school so um, you know we're still evaluating all the options and we will be looking at all those various levels of cost um, another point here is that if we went with the options that um, renovate the existing school we've got to come up with temporary costs you know if we have to provide rental trailers or an alternate location for schools we have to add all those costs in so even the options we use town owned land that you already own have other premiums associated with it the american federal holiday of martin luther king day honors a man who took a stand for equality and wanted nothing more than peace and for people to be kind and help each other Many students throughout the Hopkinton school system and community members represented what Martin Luther King Jr. stood for as they took their day off and made it a day on. Chair of the Hopkinton Youth Commission, Margie Wigan, explains. My name is Margie Wigan. I'm the chair of the Hopkinton Youth Commission. And today we are holding Hopkinton's Martin Luther King Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Giving Back. We encourage uh, youth to come out and give back to the community by volunteering in some way. Um, and we start with a Dunkin' Donut breakfast donated by South Street Dunkin' Donuts. Thank you very much. And then we have a speaker today. Our speaker was Alan Cantor, who is fabulous, and talked about um, making the world better one man at a time, focusing on Martin Luther King and coming, looking at one of the quotes that Martin Luther King said, um, which talked about everybody can be great by giving service. It doesn't matter if you know all of your grammar and, or if you get a college degree, although that's important. Um, what's important is that everyone gives back and, and through love um, and sharing that love in, for humanity um, is how everyone could be great. So he came out with everybody serve love as the pieces that pulled from that quote. Um, it's important to us in the Youth Commission that youth have good values and that's one of our uh, parts of our mission statement so we feel that volunteering and volunteerism is something to encourage our youth to do um, giving back caring for others and being a community globally as well as locally can you explain the concept of a day on yes thank you uh, the day on not a day off is that today would be a school holiday so the youth that are here, and I know last year we had 341 that we tracked as participating this day, um, young, young people, 341 young people. So making it a day on, these kids could be home sleeping, they could be playing Minecraft, they could be hanging out with their friends at the mall, but they're here and they're volunteering, they're giving service, they're making fleece blankets, they're writing valentines for seniors in town, they're writing letters to servicemen and women, they are serving at the historical society building, they're cleaning trash in schools, I mean in the school parking lots, they're giving back, they're making it a day on instead of a day off because they are volunteering their time and we really appreciate that and we think it's good for them and it's good for us. And how long have you been in charge of doing this day on? Um, I've actually been in the, on the Youth Commission for about 20 years. Um, the uh, day of Giving Back is a national effort and was brought to um, us by Youth Commission member Linda Katz about nine years ago. So she went off the committee I think four years ago, so I've, I think I've been running it for about four years. Initially it was an in-house thing with activities um, in the cafeteria, but I wanted to make it out in the community as well, so we search for 
uh, places in town where youth could serve. So now we do both. We have things in the community at large and as well, you know, some activities here in the Brown Gym as well as the blood drive. HCAM News was on the scene as the Martin Luther King Day activities commenced and we got to hear from some of the participants who worked to benefit many great causes. The Hopkinton Youth Commission hosted a wide array of Martin Luther King Day activities, including American Red Cross Blood Drive, writing letters and designing books for troops serving overseas, blanket and mitten design for charitable causes, and much more. A number of Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, as well as the Hopkinton High School Student Council participated. HCAM News was on the scene. We were making pop, uh, I mean mittens, well we were making mittens for koalas whose paws got burnt in um, forest fires because they were trying to hold on to the trees but the trees were burning. Yeah. So, but they didn't want to go down because they knew the biggest predator, the dingoes, would be after them. But the dingoes ran away but they still didn't know to get down from the trees. Oh, those are nice mittens. How long did it take you to make them? Um, not, not long. We just um, we just got a piece of thread and sewed uh, them together, two pieces of um, fabric, and then we were done. One of them was tried on my sister to um see if they fit, and, and my they sister's fit hand fine. is like that big, so, so they, they fit, fit her. Fine. Yeah. So she can wear them all the time. I don't think so. I yeah. don't think that, that, that they'll be very helpful for her. Yeah, because they so don't have they, the fingers. Um, yeah, but before she needs, they like, put the on the mittens, they need four for each koala because um, they hold on with their feet and their hands. So it takes four for just one koala, so we had to make a lot. Are they warm? Uh, uh, no, no, they're sort of warm. Yeah, they're not cool really supposed like to be. Uh, they're not really supposed to be warm. But they, they are just the made for production, yeah. Yeah. so they won't hold the paws when they walk on them. Yeah, because like Australia is like really hot and like all year long. It'll keep the paws clean while the cup heals. So. We're making a bunch of coloring books for um, children at different children's hospitals, like the Metro West Framingham Hospital and the Boston Children's Hospital. Uh, we printed out a bunch of different uh, types, like princesses and different like. I think there's like Egyptian characters and just stuff like that. And then everyone can pick a variety of things like mazes or something to focus on and then they get to design the cover and then yeah, just uh, ship it off to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really busy. We actually did blankets too for about the first hour and I think we made, was it, what was it, like 50 blankets or something? Um, yeah, like 30, 30. 30, yeah. So we made lots of blankets too and now we're doing this as our second project. So I think we had over 70 volunteers here today, all from NHS. We definitely encourage people to do their own service activities, which is one of the pillars of NHS. And we probably will have another group project like this in the future as well. Making bookmarks, Valentine's hearts for the senior citizens, and we are also making bracelets for the senior center. I made one. Made a lot of Valentine's. Yeah. Made many Valentine's. Made very many Valentine's. So Valentine's were the most popular. Yes. They were the most fun to make too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> A great job to all the participants in the Youth Commission's Martin Luther King Day activities. You played a big part in helping many great causes. A lot more coming up on HCAM News, including a look at Hiller's sports and a song circle held at the library in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. HCAM News will be right back. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participate in nominating your HHS grad. Welcome back to HCAM News. Excitement is in the air for the Hopkinton Hillers as nearly all the winter teams are in the fight for a postseason berth. Our latest sports update features a TVL victory for the boys basketball team. 
Tuesday, January 6th, Hiller's boys basketball took on Bellingham. Matt Locke hits here to make it 9-6 Hillers. Then later, at the very end of the first quarter, Jake Doherty nails the three to give the Hillers a 22-14 lead heading into the second. The Hillers offense came through outscoring Bellingham in the second, 18-15, to head into the halftime locker room up 40-29. Then the third quarter, it was all Hillers, as they outscored Bellingham 16-2 to head into the fourth quarter up 56-31. Bellingham outscored the Hillers 21-10 in the fourth, but it would not be enough as the Hillers take down the Bellingham Blackhawks 66-52 and they improve to 4-4 four four on the season. Jake Doherty knocked down 14 points. Matt Locke and Mitch Nagel pitched in for 11 each. Also on Tuesday, January 6th, girls basketball. Bellingham beat Hopkinton 50-39. Wednesday, January 7th, boys track and girls track both beat Westwood to both improved to 4-0. and oh. The boys won 75-10. They won all the events. Derek Winchman won the hurdle. Mike Cuthbert won the dash. The one mile was won by Ryan Branch. Evan Park won the 600 meters. Mike Cuthbert won the 300 meters. The high jump was won by Cal Holland. Evan Park won the 1,000 meters. Brian Gow won the two mile. The shot put was won by Declan McWilliams. And the relay was won by Hopkinton. In the girls' matchup, Nicole Belial finished first in the hurdle. Emily Hoffman first in the 600 meter. Emily Mastriani first in the 300 meter. The high jump was won by Zoe Camadromos. The 1,000 meter was won by Isabel Giordano. And the relay was won by Hopkinton. Also on Wednesday, January 7th, girls swimming beat over Sherborne 94 to 87. And then on Friday, January 9th, Boys basketball lost a tough one to Westwood, 71 to 43. They are now four and five on the season. Girls basketball also lost to Westwood, 61 to 35. The girls are four and three. Girls hockey, Dover, Sherborne, Hopkinton beat Oakmont five to two. In boys swimming, Wayland beat Hopkinton, 165 to 118. In girls swimming, Wayland also beat Hopkinton, 169 to 135. Saturday, January 10th, boys hockey lost to Medfield 4-1. Boys swimming got the victory against Foxborough 73-56. Girls swimming also beat Foxborough 92-70. Also on Saturday, January 10th, Hopkinton Wrestling improved to 12-0 as they won a quad meet beating hosts New Bedford 45-24, Stoughton 51-21, and Waltham 28-0. Connor Patrick, Chisai Zarba, Ethan Puvakad, Sam Esfahani, Lucas Kaminsky, Conrad Lavoie, and Josh Sokol all were undefeated at the meet. A few Metro West Daily News Hillers All-Stars to tell you about as the Metro West Daily News recently released the Fall Sports Season All-Stars. A couple Hillers got recognized. In football, running back Drew Donahue made the second team. In girls soccer, goalkeeper Madison Gearshick was named to the all-star team. In volleyball, a handful of players from the state champions named to the Metro West Daily News All-Stars, including Holly Adams, Renee Cooprider, Hannah Engstrom, and Whitney Thalheimer. The coach of the year went to Margie Grabmeyer of the Hopkinton Hillers as they won the Division II state championship this fall season. Be sure to check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Facebook and Twitter pages for all you need to know about Hiller's sports. The Hopkinton Library hosted a song circle in honor of Martin Luther King Jr., where many local musicians gathered to play tunes about peace and equality. Here is a look at some of the terrific musicians who played at the event. Shall we Yeah. 
Coming up soon on HCAM, you can catch a number of events celebrating the 300th birthday of Hopkinton, as well as Hiller's sports, as we are in the midst of the winter sports season. For more on what's coming up on the HCAM channels, our promotions coordinator, Courtney, has our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., the ladies from Hopkinton Coffee Break are back to fill us in on what has been happening in 2015. I did a workshop at the Cambridge Incubator this week and ran into some kids that um, are doing startups that yeah. I knew uh, that were classmates of my kids. I'm like, Absolutely. oh my word, are you old enough? It's so <laughs> wonderful. On Monday, January 26th at 5.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen will air live on HCAM TV with a discussion about 203 Pond Street. At 7 p.m., the spotlight shines on audience members as they share their original works and wake up and smell the poetry. When we look in the mirror, we are fooled so easily. Until we see we're right where we thought we'd be eventually. At 8 p.m., Linda Connolly discusses slavery in Hopkinton during her Stage 3250 talk. I picked this topic to research just because I, I think that it's really amazing that the town that I live in, the town where my children grew up, that slaves lived, labored, and were owned by families in this town, in Hopkinton. On Tuesday, January 27th at 5 p.m., the girls' and boys' basketball teams go up against Medway in a live doubleheader on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, January 28th at 11 a.m., the Martin Luther King Day Song Circle will air, where local musicians sing about peace for all. At 11.35 a.m., school resources officer Phil Powers speaks to the Hopkinton Women's Club about his role in the schools. And at 12.30 p.m., learn about bioidentical hormone replacement therapy and the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series. In a new Business Matters at 8.30 p.m., Peter Mezzett discusses his family business and how he stays profitable after four generations. I'm the oldest child in my generation of my siblings. And, um, you know, from a very young age, um, working out in the fields back then, um, 
I was able to find out how special it was and I've always felt kind of obligated to carry on and be a steward for the business. On Thursday, January 29th at 8.30 p.m., Les Sampu performs original folk and blues style songs in Studio Session Live. Pattern paper, the walls of every room are triple tier chandelier, sets of silver spoons. Oh my, my, my. On Friday, January 30th at 6.30 p.m., the girls are at it again in Girls Basketball vs. Holliston, live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, February 1st at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from January 26th will air. On HCAM Ed, Martin Luther King Day speaker Alan Cantor tells how volunteering has changed who he is. Also keep an eye out for our new two-minute series, keeping you up to date with the latest happenings around town in town government, and here at HCAM. Do you know someone who wants the HCAM Insider delivered to their inbox every week? If so, have them send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, send it to me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.